Hello everybody. Today we're going to go over um, chart rectification, how to rectify a horoscope using some specific Vedic methods and techniques. And this is based on the trigger transit techniques uh, that I learned from Ernst Wilhelm. It seemed to work pretty well. Uh, a lot of people do rectification in different ways. Some people um, will use dowsing. Other people will use intuition. A lot of Vedic astrologers use the dashas. But we need to find a way that we can rectify a chart that all of us can use. Uh, intuition, that's hit or miss. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I've known a lot of people who've had their chart rectified in that way, even using dowsing. Sometimes they're spot on, other times they're completely off. So I don't trust it completely. Of course I like to test it first because it can work. Um, other people use dashes. Dashes are good, but they're not as specific as we need them to be because they, they're too broad. When we're looking at dashes, there can be time periods that are just too large of a window. Uh, they can help us get the right ascendant, but they can't necessarily allow us to really zero in on specific degrees or specific minutes. And that's really helpful, especially when you're using the Vargas, um, especially the higher Vargas, like the D40, D45, D60, because those change within minutes sometimes which is why there are often differences between um, twins, which is really a fascinating topic in and of itself. So anyway, what are we going to do today? Well, we have a chart of, um, of a grandfather of one of my clients. She gave me permission, and he also gave permission, uh, I hope, to use this chart to rectify uh, his birth time. Uh, this is a very... Um, interesting case because it is an Aquarius Ascendant, supposed to be Aquarius Ascendant born at 10.30 a.m. However, through rectification, we find out that it actually moves to 12.59, uh, 12 degrees, 59 minutes, uh, Pisces Ascendant, and it covers a lot of interesting ground. We're going to be using the Atmakarika to determine the birth time. We're going to be using the information around this person's father, around their career, uh, how they approach the world. And we also have two dates, two specific dates, November 10th, 1949, uh, and August 5th, 1955. If you're going to do rectification using these methods, you need to have at least two to three good dates, hopefully more, uh, but for the sake of time, we're just using two here, to make sure it all lines up together. If you can get all the dates to line up together through the higher Vargas, you can be pretty sure that you've got an accurate birth time. If you can't, you might be close, and sometimes that's all you need, but you might find that certain things don't work, especially if you're using the higher Vargas. Um, that being said, we're going to be looking at the Bava Cusps. Now, some of you might not be familiar with the Bava Cusps. We can see in this chart the Rashis all line up with the Cusps. The Rashis are, for example, uh, Pisces, first Rashi, um, Aries, second, and so on. And these numbers down here indicate the Bava cusps, or the sensitive points within the birth chart. And I use the Campanus house system to determine these. The further north you go uh, when you're born, the more these bunch up together. And when you look at the Vargas, they don't all follow the same pattern like you would think they should. Whatever degree um, this Bava cusp, the sixth Bava cusp, is in Leo, well, that's going to put the sixth Bava cusp in the Navamsha, Let's see here, where is that? It might be hiding. There it is. In Aries. So it's based on the degree of the Bava cusp, and that's how we get these throughout the Vargas. And these are what we use, uh, the lords of these Bava cusps, because they create the precise, the specific, concrete things within a person's life. And when those things come together, uh, we can see when events mature. So that's what we're going to be doing, and um, we'll go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and set the time back to um, where it was when I first got this chart. So we're at 10.30 a.m. Now the way this person was described to me, the granddaughter said that her first instinct was that her grandfather had a strong Jupiterian quality probably a Pisces ascendant, that he was a scholar, his knowledge was vast, and he was good at writing, amazing at writing, public speaking qualities, 
worked in broadcast, worked in politics, very religious and open-minded. So a lot of things here that can be seen within uh, someone ruled by Jupiter. However, what came to my mind was we need to see what the Atmakarika is first, because the Atmakarika, even if the person's an Aquarius ascendant, if the Atmakarika is Jupiter, they're going to get a lot of Jupiterian qualities. And sure enough, we see that the AK is Jupiter. Jupiter has the highest degrees. So all these things associated with Jupiter are naturally going to be within this person's um, personality. Not because of being a Pisces ascendant, but because the Atmakarika was Jupiter. Now, the other thing that came up was having uh, good writing authorship skills, and that's something that we need to use Gemini techniques to determine. And if we look in the Navamsha, we need to find the Svamsha, which is the Atmakarika, the sign the Atmakarika is in in the Navamsha. We see that Jupiter is in Leo, and one of Gemini's intelligences or um, indications for authorship is when Jupiter Rashi aspects the moon, and the moon Rashi aspects Jupiter in the Svamsha. And we see we have this here. However, uh, this would be the same whether it was an Aquarius ascendant or a Pisces ascendant. So again, this doesn't make it any easier because now we have these two indications which could be true in either situation. So we have to go deeper. We have to see what else uh, can we extrapolate from this. Well, um, this person was said to uh, work in radio, not said to, they actually do, work in radio, public speaking, politics, uh, national television as well. And if we're going to look to that, we want to see what is the 10th house lord doing. Well, the 10th house lord is ruled by Mars, and that 10th house lord goes into the 6th, which is something that doesn't really have anything to do with radio and broadcast and news and television. We see that Mars does rule the third house, which can speak to that, but again, it's in the sixth. It doesn't give that kind of confluence there. So that's one thing that makes me think not quite the case. This probably isn't going to be true for this particular birth time, having the Aquarius ascendant. Next thing that we heard, or she told me, was that um, the person had a very difficult and rough early childhood. And this can be true, again, from either ascendant. Because as we see, the early childhood re is represented by the second house, um, the second Rashi, and the lord of the second Rashi is Jupiter, and it's debilitated. So there's strike number one against difficulty in that regard, and it's in the twelfth house. We also see Rahu is here in the second. Rahu being a malefic doesn't add any help there. So it could be true from the Aquarius ascendant. However, from the Pisces ascendant, we see the ruler of the second is Mars, and Mars goes into the fifth, and it's debilitated. So this just gives more confluence as well, that it could still be a Pisces ascendant. So those two things don't help out very much. Now, supposedly he was a very out-of-the-box thinker, or is a very out-of-the-box thinker. Um, very pioneering, also an activist. And this would make more sense having Rahu in the ascendant. Uh, because Rahu gives out-of-the-box thinking. Rahu makes a person challenge others. Uh, Rahu also uh, makes a person ahead of their time. And it can give fame. We have to remember Rahu can give fame. So having that on the Ascendant can give fame. So it makes me lean more towards Pisces at the moment. It was also said that he was very rebellious as a child. Um, Typically, people ruled by Saturn are not that rebellious. They're very traditional. Like to stick to, um, like to stick to what their culture gives them to a degree. Uh, they don't really break out of the box not a lot. They're very precise and they're very steady and traditional and conservative. Pisces is not so much. Also, having Rahu on the ascendant, it's going to give that um, emphasis towards being rebellious and probably in regards to his family. He probably seemed like the black sheep of the family. Again, because of Rahu being there on the Ascendant. And there are a number of things that we could go into with this rectification, and I actually spent about two hours, two and a half hours working on it before I did this video. Um, so you're getting the condensed version. I'm going to focus on some of the trigger transits here that we can see that show us the correct birth time. So first of all, let's use the dates um, 
November 10th, 1949, and see if we can find within the dashes an indication for boost of career or getting a new career. Quite an amazing job as she described it for him. So this is a very important part of his life. So November 10th of 1949, he was in Venus, Sun, Jupiter. Well, Venus being in the 11th, that can activate awards and titles and gains. However, Venus rules the 9th house, 7, 8, 9, and Venus rules the 4th house. So it'd be more gains of property uh, or more gains of educational titles. And also we have uh, Sun running. Well, Sun rules the 7th house, and the Sun is in the 12th. So the 7th and the 12th has really nothing to do with gaining a career, gaining a career position boost. And then we have Jupiter running. Well, Jupiter rules the 2nd and the 11th. However, what we see is that ruler of the 11th goes into the 12th. Again, doesn't really support it. Do we see it within the 10th divisional chart? All right, Venus is in the 10th, so that can speak to it. The Sun is in the 12th, though, still not so much. And then Jupiter is in the seventh. And Jupiter rules the third and the sixth within this tenth divisional chart. So we don't have enough confluence here. We'll check another date, August 5th, 1955. And we'll go to Venus Rahu Venus. This was a time of marriage. Well, Venus again rules the fourth and the ninth can give gain of marriage, because we have the ninth lord, which deals with marriage, in the eleventh house. Rahu, though, is in the second house. Now, that can give more responsibilities, but it's not necessarily speaking to marriage. And in the Navamsha, we have Venus in the fifth in its own home. That's good. And then we have Rahu in the seventh. That's potential, because we have uh, a trine and an angle getting activated. But it's not enough for me. Uh, it's not enough for me to, to make a conclusive decision there. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and look at the um, trigger transits to see if it's supported by trigger transits. All right, so let's go ahead and pull that up. And we'll set the date for 8, 5, 1955. I believe this occurred in stone. Okay. So there we are. Now with this particular transit, um, we do have a lot of confluence here. Because if we look at the Navamsha, what we'll see is that Mercury rules the first in the Navamsha, that's the important Bhava cusp within the Navamsha, and Mars rules the ninth Bhava cusp within the Navamsha. So these are the two things we need to see coming together or influencing the Atmakarka or influencing the Ascendant Lord. Well, having Mercury, it's all bunched up here, so it's hard to see. But if we look here, we see Mercury's in Leo, Jupiter's in Leo, Venus is in Leo, Mars is in Leo. It's all in the seventh house. It's all together. And so the ruler of the first in the Navamsha, the ruler of the ninth in the Navamsha, coming together with the Atmakarika, Jupiter, in the seventh house of relationships, that can speak to a trigger transit, which would give relationships. So this time period, 1030, is supportive in this regard. Now we need to look at it in the higher Vargas. If it works out in the higher Vargas, great. So in the higher Vargas, the ruler of the ninth is the moon. Well, what's the moon up to? Well, the moon is over here in um, Pisces. And so the moon isn't going to affect us in any way. All right, so that doesn't help. Now we want to look at the Akshavadamsha. And again, we're always looking for the ninth bhava cusp, particularly when we're dealing with marriage. Again, ninth bhava cusp is here, which is in Cancer. 
the moon, as we've seen, it's close. It's very close to that ascendant, that lagna, but it's in a different sign. So it's not, it's not activating that. All right. And then we want to look at the Shashtiamsha, again, the ninth bhava cusp. Ninth bhava cusp, Mercury. Well, Mercury is involved in this, so that can give that influence there. But it's not enough. We didn't get, we didn't get the other two um, higher vargas involved here. So it's a little bit shaky. Still possible, but shaky. Now what we want to do is go to the time that I actually saw working. Well, before we do that, let's go ahead and look at the career, the career boost with this particular time. So the career boost was November 10th, 1949. Okay, on November 10th, 1949, we're not going to worry too much about um, the daylight savings time. What do we have here? First of all, we need to see what's going on with the tenth lord, the ruler of the tenth house. And where is Mars? Well, it's in the eighth. All right, so that's not going to help. And this is, remember, we're counting along. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're not looking at the Baba cusps at this point. So it's in the eighth. Not necessarily supportive of career. It is supportive of change. And since it is, well, it's happening in uh, an enemy sign with an enemy, Saturn. So that would be a more negative change. Let's look at the D10, because that's the important Varga. And we need to find the first Lord in the D10 and the tenth Lord in the D10. Now, that's what we always need to look at. In the Navamsha, it's the first Lord in the Navamsha and the ruler of the tenth Bhava cusp in the Navamsha. In the D10, the ruler of the first and also the ruler of the tenth Bhava cusp. The reason we don't look at the ruler of the first and the higher Vargas, the 40th, 45th, and 60th, is because those are for all things. And the ruler of the ascendant in the particular Varga dealing with career is important for career. The ruler of the ascendant in the Varga dealing with relationships is important in relationships. So in the 10th, we see Saturn is ruling the 10th Bhava cusp, and we see Saturn is uh, in the first and exalted, and Venus is ruling the first Bhava cusp here. So again, 10th Bhava cusp in the 8th, um, it is Rashi aspecting, no, it's not Rashi aspecting the Atmakarika. So that's not helping. Venus, Venus is with the Atmakarika, but there's quite a difference here. That's quite a big gap. And Venus is not impacting um, the 10th house here, so that doesn't work out. And we're not going to follow that through the higher Vargas because it didn't even work out in the 10th. Now let's go ahead and change it to the time that I found. Again, keeping in mind that I um, spent about two hours on this previously going through multiple different times. So we want to go to 11, 18, 17, 11, 18, 17. So at 11, 18 a.m., 17 seconds. Now what do we have? Well, we have the Ascendant as Pisces, which again does fit with this Rahu. Uh, difficulty with the Father, well, Mars rules the ninth in this chart. Um, Mars is debilitated in the fifth, so that can give the issues with Father. Even though this person does have a lot of good qualities, it's been said they're prone to pessimism. Having Saturn in the fourth, which is our emotional buoyancy, will definitely give that kind of pessimism. And let's go ahead and move on to the specific dates that we have for this person. In the first one, we'll look at the doshes for marriage. So November 10th, 1949. So it's right on the Venus Moon, Venus Moon Mars. Make sure I've got that right. Oh, pardon me, that's the radio job. So the radio job was November 10th, 1949. Let's take a look at that. So this is the promotion time period. 
And what do we see from this chart? Venus rules the third house, which deals with radio, broadcast, writing, all those sorts of activities. Um, and it goes in the tenth, so it influences career in that regard. Venus and the moon are together in the tenth house. Venus rules the third and the eighth. And the moon rules the fifth. And this goes into the tenth. So we have Venus and Moon supporting career at this time by the Venus Moon Dasha. And why did I focus on Venus in the eighth? Because he had a very transformational career from what I understand. It was very good at challenging uh, authorities or challenging what was going on in, in the media and politics at the time. And the Moon can make a person very visible and very popular. And this was a popular, well-liked person. Having the Moon in the tenth gives that. And getting Venus and Moon triggered by Dasha Again, brings rises this person's status, gives rise in status. So the dasha works. In the tenth divisional chart, we see we have Venus in the fifth and Moon in the tenth. Again, whenever we have planets in trines or angles, just generally as a snapshot technique, that can show that there is a positive growth, positive situation coming about within that Varga. Now we, we would want to explore a little bit deeper in regards to dignities and avashtas, but just for the sake of these snapshot techniques, we'll go ahead and move forward from here. Now let's look at the um, dasha for marriage, which was August 5th, 1955. Okay, so August 5th, 1955 might want to play with the time just a little bit more because again we haven't um, we could have used a little more specific dates and times but that's okay I think we're getting pretty close here the person was in a Venus Jupiter cycle all right now Venus for a male represents the wife anytime we go into a Venus Dasha that can bring in relationships particularly when it's in the tenth house because it activates that uh, that natural karaka Jupiter is the Ascendant Lord, and Jupiter is also an indicator specifically for um, marriage relationships, so it's a karka for that. I would have liked to have seen these planets work out a little bit better in regards to placements from each other, um, but we've got some other confluence coming up in regards to the Navamsha and the timing. In the Navamsha, Venus is ruling the first house and the first Bavakas, which strongly activates uh, marriage, and it's in that particular house. And from Venus, we see that Jupiter is in the 11th. From the first house, Jupiter is in the 11th. The 11th house in any Varga gives gains, so it's gains of marriage. And we also see that Jupiter rules the ninth Bavakas, which is a very important Bavakas for marriage. So we have the ruler of the first Bava Cusp getting activated in the Navamsha, the ruler of the ninth getting activated in the Navamsha, and by placement within the Navamsha, it's supported. Let's check the transits for both of these now. Transits. We will start with job promotion, since we're already there, November 10th, 1949. And what do we want to look at? The Desumpsha. Always the Desumpsha, ruler of the first in the Desumpsha, and ruler of the tenth within the Desumpsha. And what do we have? Well, let's see here. We have the ruler of the first in the Desumpsha, which is Jupiter, has just recently crossed the natal Jupiter, which is also the Atmakarika, and the ruler of the first house, and the ruler of the tenth house. So having the ruler of the first in the Desumpsha, crossing the ruler of the first in the Rashi and the first in the, uh, excuse me, the tenth in the Rashi chart, uh, that sets us up for positive influence to rise in, in career and status. This is also falling in the eleventh house naturally, which can give promotion. We see that Mercury is Rashi aspecting this Jupiter, Rashi aspecting this eleventh house as well, and Mercury rules the tenth. So here we have confluence in this regard. Let's look in the higher Vargas. Higher Vargas, the ruler of the 10th. Let's see, a little tricky to see here. It is Venus. 
Yes. So the ruler of the tenth is Venus. We have Venus again in the eleventh house, getting ready to cross the eleventh Bava cusp. Has recently crossed the Sun, the natural indicator for the self, which is also important. I forgot to mention, which speaks to this. So remember, we're using the Jaimini, techni uh, Jaimini techniques and Jaimini karakas, both the natural karakas, such as the Sun for the self, and also the um, specific karakas based on the individual charts, planetary degrees, which is Jupiter for this person. Now, what's the ruler of the 10th in the 45th Varga? It is Mars, because it rules Aries. And what do we have? But the ruler of the 10th, Rashi aspecting the 1st. The ruler of the 10th within this particular Varga is also, also Rashi aspecting the 10th house here. So again, more confluence. Is very nice to see. And let's go ahead and look at the next Varga, Shastiyamsha. The ruler of the tenth is Saturn, and Saturn is also Rashi aspecting the first and Rashi aspecting the tenth. This brings in all the confluence we need for this particular date. We could have dialed in a little bit more. Um, we could have gotten a little more specific, I believe. However, with the time that we have in this video and with the information that was provided um, to me, uh, this is enough to make me confident to work with this chart. So whenever you're trying to rectify, you need to know what the Jaimini Karakas are. It's the Jaimini Karaka for the self. If it's for a relationship, the Dara Karaka. Um, if it's for children, um, the fifth Karaka, <coughs> picture Karaka. You need to know what the natural karakas are. So Jupiter for children, um, the sun for the self, and so on. Venus for partners, for a man. These are the things we need to consider. After that, once we know those, we see how do they meet up in the sky by transit? Where do they overlap? When they come together by transit, then you're going to get a trigger transit for that particular event to occur. You also need to use the particular Vargas and the Bhava cusp lords within that Varga. Those will show you, those will indicate um, other energies that speak to whatever it is you're trying to predict in regards to the event or look back on when you're trying to match things up. So go back and follow this video in that regard. And once you get those lined up, then you also want to go to the higher Vargas the Akshavadamsha, the Shastyamsha, and the Kavadamsha, and get the particular Bhava cusp lords for the event in question to line up as well in regards to trigger transits. And this can take a long time, and it can be very frustrating, and you can really get it lined up one way, but you try to line up another way, and it totally breaks down. So this is not something that's very easy. Uh, it's tedious. But eventually, when you get to that time, that exact time where it all lines up perfectly, you know you've got a good time, you've got a good chart, and um, you, you'll feel like you accomplished something because there is so much to look at. So consider that. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And in the future, maybe we'll try to do another rectification just to dial it in a little bit more. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to post them in regards to these techniques, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you for your patience. And I hope you enjoyed the video.